In this lesson, we're going to talk about starting to create your virtual studio. Now, this is something that I want you to do sooner rather than later, because all the content you film, all the calls that you take, most of the time, they're going to be happening in your own personal space, whether that be in your bedroom, in your office, in your living room. So we've got to make this represent your brand, because this is the one thing that your audience, your customers, your clients, they're all going to be seeing this, okay? And a lot of times it's their first time that they get to see you, right? Or if you're guesting on a podcast, like people are going to be attracted to you and they're going to see you. And so you've got to really visually represent your brand, uh, no matter what we've created for your brand thus far. This is one of the most important things because this is your opportunity to attract and really show that you have a quality brand. Okay. So a lot of times, like you've probably seen this on your social media, right? You'll have someone show up on a podcast recording or show up on a call and they've got a messy bed behind them, horrible lighting. <laughs> Maybe the camera's like shooting up their nose or way too high or they're way down here. You know, I, I can give so many examples of like poor quality virtual studio setups. But what I really want to emphasize is three specific elements that are really going to set your quality ahead of the rest. Okay. Even if we're just 1% better in terms of quality versus the masses, like that's going to set your brand apart from everybody else that's online, right? And when you can show up and show that you take pride in your space and that you have quality branding in terms of your virtual studio, it's just going to show that you really value what it is that you're doing. You you take pride in your work and pride in your brand and you've taken the time to set this up correctly, okay? So take the time, like pause now and go ahead and like, let's get clear on what this should look like. And if you need to order some new stuff, do it, do it today, right? Don't wait, don't sleep on this. This is really important to get in now. So the three categories, number one is background. Okay. Now I'm working with what I've got here. This is our rig. Okay. This is literally our living room that's behind me, but I didn't just leave it boring and just normal, right? Like what I've actually done is like dimmed down the lights. We've turned on a light down here to just give it some movement, give it some like fun stuff happening in the background. Okay. I've made sure like I'm lit. There's a light here that lights me up. And then I've got even this little one, little one right here in the background. And sometimes I even light that candle back there. Okay. And then I make sure like there's no child's toys. There's nothing crazy happening behind me. Look, if there is, and I'm in a pinch, I just throw it to the side, right? Because you want your background to just set the scene. You don't want it to be distracting for whoever it is that's on the other side, whether this be literally a sales call or like a podcast interview, you just want the vibe to be right. Okay. So look behind you, like look back at a recording that you have of you speaking. Maybe you've done a podcast interview before. How was your background? Were you mindful of what that looked like? And if you have text or you have a background behind you right now, is part of it being cut off? How is the quality of your background. What does it look like? And I'm going to put, it's not going to be this video. It's going to be below this video. I have a walkthrough of when I had my virtual studio set up in a home office. And so I'll give you some ideas of what you can do. If you don't like the background that you have behind you, there's actually a way to order panels that you can put up on your wall behind you that looks super legit. And it's really inexpensive to do like less than a couple hundred dollars. And you could have a studio set up that looks so sick. Okay. So I will put that below this video, but for now, check the background that you're working with behind you and work with what you've got. Look, I do some of these calls now in my bedroom, but I make sure that I make, I make the bed. I turn on the lighting. I make sure the lighting looks right, right? I still put effort into the backdrop no matter what. Okay. So ask yourself how you're doing that. Okay. Number two is quality equipment. Okay. I really want to stress this. Like if you've got a computer and you're working with that camera on your computer, I would recommend upgrading it. Okay. Like right now, what you're looking at me through is a DSLR camera that I'm using as a webcam. Okay. Now I'm not saying you've got to go that tech heavy, but you can invest in like a smaller webcam that at least boosts the quality of your camera by a little. Okay. Now, the reason that you want to do this once again is most people are just using the standard equipment that comes on their computer, which is usually their MacBook. It's usually a little tiny camera on the front. Now, by you putting in more effort and you getting a higher quality camera, it's going to look really good. Okay. Not only is it going to look, look good, it's going to look more professional 
Okay. And your brand needs to look professional online in terms of positioning. Okay. I'm going to like beat this. <laughs> I'm going to beat this into you, like ingrain it into you. Okay. Okay. Quality equipment. Now, uh, this microphone, this is a really good example of like an investment that I made because I know like this is the best podcasting microphone that you can get on the marketplace. Okay. Now, when we get into podcasting, I'm going to talk about tech that's the best of the best. And I'm going to talk about tech that's budget friendly for when you first get started. So don't worry. You don't have to go ordering the best of the best if right now that's not where you're at financially and you want to wait. That's fine. But just understand that it does speak wonders of your brand when you are using really high quality content and you are making sure that your listeners and your audience is getting the best of the best from you, right? And realizing that it's evergreen content that you're putting out there most of the time. And so by using good quality from the start, like it's just really helpful for, for as you grow this and as you continue like developing your brand. Okay. Number three. So we had number one was backdrop. Number two is quality equipment. Number three is the lighting. Okay. This is so important. And honestly, something that I've, <laughs> I've struggled with this, like my entire journey of like filming videos online, honestly. And you'll see that if you go back and watch some of my previous videos on my even social media platforms, right? It's, it's really difficult to get the lighting right, in my opinion. Uh, especially if you're working with natural lighting. So what I would say is if you could get like a studio light box, you can find them on Amazon at least get a beauty ring, like something to where you or like, yeah, one of those ring lights, something that you can control the lighting source is like really important. At this point, I'm like pretty, I, I think like pretty blessed in this rig because I'm just literally using if you see the, the lights back here, that lighting is actually pretty perfect in terms of like when I have the shades drawn, it actually puts off a really nice light for uh, recording. So that's actually all that I'm using right now. Natural lighting works great, but it's just you can't really control it. So get something that you can control and you are in charge of. Uh, uh, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, they'll talk about the, the idea of having one actually right above your head, right? Like something that's coming in, it's hidden obviously off camera. It's coming in and it's right above your head. And then another that's kind of off to the side of you, right? So you get a nice like contour on your face. Then you'll see too, like I have this light down here. I can actually show you this, okay? It's actually off the stand, but it's just, it's actually a two pack. I got it on Amazon, but the way we position it down here is just kind of angled upwards, right? So then you get a different coloration on your face to make it less like boring in the lighting. Okay. And what you'll see too, in a lot of YouTube uh, studio setups is you'll see a light in the back, like an accent light of some sort. So you could get one that's like glow letters, or you could get a Himalayan salt lamp or an Edison bulb, just something that's gonna provide like some depth in the background. And you see we have our fireplace going down here, right? And then we do have lighting above, but for some reason it always dies. So that would be going typically. So just look around your space and see how you can put some like intention into designing it and, and, and showing that you've really taken notice of your space because think about it when you're getting on a sales call or when you're getting on a podcast interview, like you're truly inviting someone into your space. And so you want to make it feel like a vibe. Okay. Go the extra mile, put the time, energy, and effort into setting up your space correctly. And it's going to speak wonders of your personal brand. So that is it for this video. I'm going to drop one below this that walks through my previous virtual studio setup uh, when I had it in a home office. And if you're not working with the background like this, you can actually create one using a similar setup to what I did, or you can create a type of mobile background that can move around with you. So definitely check that out. And if you have any other questions or you want to send pictures of your existing backdrop and get some ideas of how that could look, feel free to put it into our group. And I would love to offer feedback and help you design your space. So let's get at it.